आई वी एम Welcome to another fantastic episode of Football Shibboleth. This is episode twenty-two. The reason why I say it's fantastic is because, uh, firstly, Ayer, who's a wise co-host of this uh, podcast, along with me, because uh, Shivram has been baptized as the main guy on the podcast, <laughs> which is not true actually. But Ayer, I have a bone to pick with you. You named the last episode "Pyar Kia to Darna Kia," and you spoke about you know our love and you know where they can reach and top four, etc. And look what happened this week. And then you spoke about United's. a uh, hard battered one all draw with west brom and see what happened against newcastle so i mean just avoid avoid speaking about these two Wait, who did uh, who did arsenal play and who did united play remind me okay so this is episode 2 <laughs> of uh, football show that was shivram boys <laughs> he can't handle any bit of criticism against city we'll come back to you uh, because you must be disappointed that city only managed to score one against arsenal but we'll come to that uh there were a lot of good matches actually played this week and uh, but my favorite was the milan derby and that's why we're calling this episode as milan and not milan because that's not a word that we have in uh, subway yeah subway subway <laughs> yeah. uh, now that you know so we're calling it milan uh because that for me was the the best of the matches that happened since we last recorded and there were a bunch of others uh I was going to call this Ramon Drago 2.0 because you know the guy goes and kills people with a hammer on the streets and there was a particular French guy who spoke to uh, Jordi Alba in that match so he'll <laughs> kill you in the streets mm. but I thought it would just become uh, too disappointing and melancholy anyways this, this, the the podcast in itself is disappointing why name the episode such so we're calling it Milan and uh, we'll go quickly into break then we'll when we come back we'll talk about all these fantastic matches and we will uh, ask Shiva how he feels about that disappointing performance by Manchester City against Arsenal. Hello everybody, welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and even LinkedIn where we're trying to put more stuff on. We'd like to thank our sponsors very quickly this week, the whole truth foods.com, Storytel, and Seat. We really do appreciate your support. And we had a great week on the network this week. So tune in for some sweetness with our hosts Sadaf and Archit as they hone their sweet tooth and talk about candies, the famous, the healthy, the traditional, and international. Check out Nan Curry; you'll enjoy it. On last week's episode of the Note, Maru and I spoke to TV presenter and columnist Veer Sangvi, who analyzed the two years of the second term of the Modi government. As China and India signed the disengagement agreement along the LAC, Lieutenant General Dr. Prakash Menon and Manoj Kevarmani joined Suyash Desai to discuss the process and the consequences it will have on the nation and in world politics. Dr. Anton Harder joins Hamsani Hariharan on states of anarchy to discuss India's right to a seat at the United States Security Council. Ashton Doctor talks about duty, how individually it binds us, and how as a society it is liberating. Check out the Habit Coach with Ashton every day. Great show and great fun to listen to that. On football show, all the boys talk about their loves and sorrows for teams and their current ranks in the world of football. And also do remember to check out Cyrus says we had a great week last week. We had Amol Mazumdar, the ex cricketer. We had Rocky and Mayur, and we did the Valentine special with Aisha and Kunal. Great fun! Do check it out. I'm sure you will enjoy that. And with that, let's get you back to your show. And we are back here. Ayer, I know you watched the the derby. I, I prefer Car Subway to Milan Subway. Yeah. I'm you just prefer Car here. Subway to Milan yeah. Subway. And nobody cares actually, <laughs> or for both the subways. Uh, but we care about the match that happened and Lukaku scoring that lovely goal and mm. uh, Martinez's first goal also. But you saw the match. You also, I remember, were the only one on the planet who saw the the first match that Milan won against Inter. What do you? How do you? How do you feel about Lukaku and Ibra not fighting but actually getting down to what they do best is you know trying to score goals? Yeah, I just have one word. Okay, multiple times. Lula, 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 Lula. That is Lukaku and Lautaro, the best strike partnership in the world. In the Wait, world. Lula. Yeah, Lula, Lukaku, Lautaro. So Lula. Okay, Lula. Fine, fine. Actually, Did you make a- that up or is that legit? I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe so you I'm- so you made it up? Yeah, because I think I started with Lalu. <laughs> then that- <laughs> hey, that is that actually. Uh, goes a lot of like a lot more for the but okay let me start by why are we you started with this a fantastic podcast then you said we're disappointing and then you're disappointing everyone by talking about this made up league where some stuff happened which when there's a million subway somewhere uh, why aren't we talking <laughs> about real football everton beat liverpool can we come back to the, the basics i know i know actually let's come back to that because that is the only 
there's nothing much to talk about the match Milan weren't as disappointing as I thought so let's move on from there let's talk about the team that was actually disappointing which was Liverpool and that record and they were comms were throwing some dates randomly went back to some third BC of the last time something happened in <laughs> Zambia etc etc uh, but we saw so you and we were talking about about the match while it was happening and how terrible uh, Liverpool seemed especially in the midfield and transition etc but I think well deserved by Everton instead of just Pissing off uh, Liverpool? I don't know. First of all, it's the Merseyside derby. So, it has a lot of history. So, it might just be dating back to 3 BC. I don't know. These football clubs have existed forever and beyond. What we do know now is Merseyside is blue. And really surprising. Everton are just coming off a loss. I mean, against Man City. So, I can't really hold them responsible for that. Um, but Liverpool should have thrashed Everton on any given day, right? Uh, Everton, yes, DCL did come back, but he played uh, very few minutes at the end. Uh, Everton's defense has been leaking goals. They haven't been pretty strong there. Liverpool were eventually expected to pick up form because Klopp, I'm guessing, is tightening the screws. But really surprising to see Everton back that um, back the win at Anfield after 22 years or something like that or 22 games I remember Com said people who are in their 30s and I was like yes that is me uh, and then came back with they have never witnessed this happen so I was like okay that that is a fair comment but I mean I don't know how further low can Liverpool go can they end below Arsenal let's find out no Arre, you to shut up you said Tottenham Hotspurs are going to win the league <laughs> uh, I'm saying Tottenham will end up below Arsenal also <laughs> But see, that, that's also not happening because every time Tottenham lose, it's not like Arsenal are doing jack about it. So, they're both still... Spurs. Aren't uh, Spurs playing Fulham? I don't know. Yeah. I don't see forward-looking fixtures. You know. that's, that's <laughs> so, what do you look at? <laughs> Current, present day, today. That's it. Today, okay. Yeah. Uh, Sapre, what do you see in Karthik's uh, favour today? No, nothing. Actually, I uh, let's not talk about Spurs losing because they lose every week. So, there's nothing mm. new to really talk about. But since you said that Mourinho is the best signing that they have, uh, you know, at this club for a while, and not Gareth Bale, and, <laughs> yeah, I'll have to change my answer and, to Bale, <laughs> <laughs> and that they're going to win the league, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I want to point out a certain tweet by Mr. John Dykes uh, last week, where he said that how a frugal Daniel Levy got into a midlife crisis and was got enamored by this charisma called Jose Mourinho. And now yeah. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna see a lot of his money going down the drain. What's so what's what's next for Mourinho? We know what's next for Tottenham, which is nothing. But what is next for Jose Mourinho? <laughs> All or nothing on Amazon Prime season two, guys. It's the nothing following the nothing. I mean, why would you? Okay, so. See, when Amazon built it, in, like they made all or nothing on the All Blacks, right? They won uh, their cups like six years in a row. They came off a World Cup win. Uh, then there was um, City, right? Now title champions. Uh, what? How did they pick Tottenham? Like, can someone help me understand what? I guess everything else is all and they are the nothing. Is that the idea? Like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, it was. it is strange. I guess that that is the Mourinho's pull behind it. And But I think, you know, I don't think they can fire him. They'll he he's owed around thirty or forty million. You know that if he's fired at this. Yeah, contract. How do agree with them? I also want this contract. Man. Yeah, no. Where to fire you? It takes thirty million. So how much is he making? Yeah, so it's something around maybe fourteen, fifteen million a year. He has two more years remaining. They probably God have to pay him, damn. pay him for the remaining two years. Damn. But are you, what are, are you doing here's, in this here's, job? Here's the here's the question, right? You fire a manager when you are extremely aspirational as a club and you want to achieve certain things and that the manager doesn't help you achieve those. Frank Lampard being the recent most example. With Mourinho and Spurs, that's not the case. They are both become average. As in Mourinho has become average. Spurs were always average. But then why would they even want to fire Mourinho? I, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't, right? And I think from what today, The Athletic came out with an article and apparently they have good sources. So, they are happy, in quotes, with a Europa League spot. So, I guess if Mourinho finishes seventh, they get job done, right? Like, what else? Nice. I like this uh, mediocre acceptance of life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what does uh, United, Arsenal have, Mourinho have in common, right? Just history. That's all they have. Mm. Uh, there's nothing going in their favor. Even with United, even though they beat flourishing Newcastle, 
थ्री वन आफ्टर द इक्वलाइज आफ्टर न्यू कासल इक्वलाइज वॉट इज हैपनिंग सेपरेट यूनाइटेड लेट्स लेट्स डबल क्लिक ऑन दैट बिकॉज यूनाइटेड हैव टफ पिक्चर्स कमिंग अप वेल टू स्टार्ट विद दिस मैच आई मीन दे हैड रियली गुड परफॉर्मेंस अगेंस्ट रियल सोशेदार in the europa league which wasn't expected to be as good but in this match the defenders are doing well right luke shaw's uh, right up there maguire had two assists albeit one for the other team in this match but she still had two assists right? so he's doing so when you're saying oh. defenders are doing well and you started with they gave assists i think defenders the question is in the answer right defenders have to defend but they are is defending the team's performance every time <laughs> so i mean he is a good defender at the end of the day But but yeah, I I think they're okay. I mean, what else can you expect from a United team? They're top seater. We they'll do good one match. They'll not do good the other match. I mean, the City there's a derby, Manchester derby coming up in in a couple of game weeks. We'll see who lies where. Right, there's a ten point gap. We'll see if that goes to. I'm sure it's going to go down to seven, and then it's going to be fifteen again. <laughs> City is losing to someone in the middle, what? <laughs> <laughs> Two <laughs> week gap. I, 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 am, I am hopeful. The fact that I still support this club means that I am hopeful. I am full of hope. No, no, it's called delusion. To play at this level, it's just delusion. Yeah, I don't mean yeah. I don't like that word. A lot of people have used it against me. I don't like that word. But, but one thing, one thing, United are doing, and I know they lost to Sheffield and they drew against Fulham, etc., etc. But they somehow and they have not beaten any of the top six, the fellow top six sides. I don't think they have scored a goal against the fellow top six sides. Neither have they against United. So sure. yeah, yeah. So it's all been bad draws. Mm. So they've been getting a point, but they have been beating this entire mid table. You know, any club that's from seventh to say seventeenth. Or 16th, they've been beating them, and they're still second. Yeah, they they have a six point advantage to Chelsea in fifth. So it's pretty much 13 games remaining. I think Champions League is guaranteed, which would have been the aim, I guess, when you started the season. So, yeah, I think what you're saying is three points against Sheffield counts the same as three points against City, right? Which is an absolute fair uh, argument. So, so but it, 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 it will affect it will affect them when, like last season, when it reaches you, you face good clubs like a Sevilla in the Europa League, who are kings of the Europa League. So. United will never win anything being this way although I look at the Europa League uh, positioning currently and a lot of big teams are likely to get knocked out the likes of say a Munchen Gladbach or even a Lille are going to get knocked out United do have a chance Inter are not even in it so Sevilla are not even in it so United have a big 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 chance of winning Arsenal that Arsenal is winning the Europa right. League so I have a feeling if if it all goes to plan it will be a Arsenal United final like it was Arsenal Chelsea few years ago yeah which yeah. Arsenal lost Because the, yeah, the competition there is not. I mean, it's. So that it's was bad. in that Baku, right? It was not. It weather was some. There was a big problem there. I don't remember <laughs> when the problem. How many years were they? Baku is not even a real place. <laughs> like <laughs> Azerbaijan, like what is that? It was guy in Hyderabad. Hey, Azerbaijan. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I like what Karthik said about United, but he's delusional because he said United win against mid-table teams who lost against Palace, Arsenal, and yeah, Spurs. That's the start of the season. There is no and Arsenal is big six first of all. <laughs> yeah, so Tottenham are also a top six technically. It's like saying the big four and you count Andy Murray with the other three, right? Like, <laughs> it's the same. Uh, <laughs> so and, anyway, ouch! ouch. No, 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 that's unfair on Andy Murray because Murray has actually has three Grand Slams and multiple, multiple, multiple finals. So yeah. sorry, Murray, Spurs are worse. But Sabri, I have a question to ask you. Yeah, all English. Shouldn't Martial be fourth choice striker now? It's high time. Now. This guy does not score goals. So Cavani followed by Greenwood, followed by Rashford. Followed yeah, I by... think I think Cavani, Rashford, Greenwood. Greenwood has now come above Martial. I don't see how Martial gets so many minutes. It's just frustrating currently. Well, we don't have. <laughs> I think we're expecting an answer somehow <laughs> from him. But yeah. He knows. Yeah. Nobody knows the answer. We just hope he's got a year and a half probably remaining on his contract and bus. Are Salah is still playing in that team? I don't know how he's still continuing to not but, get but cut. The, but but the output is there. Right? Goals output. I mean, he he's scoring those penalties, one on goal here and there. So he's still, I think, top scorer in the league or something like that. So. But you know, okay, fair. He's prime to win gold medal boot. But yeah. what are the two fullbacks doing? Right, which Sapri pointed out. Just because Alexander Arnold is not bombing forward, he's not getting those. Are but Alexander Arnold's primary goal is not to bomb forward. Like his primary goal is also to you know defend the goal, so they don't lead goals to Everton of all teams. I don't think he was never. I, in my opinion, I'm Karthik as uh, he, he has fan base for Trent Alexander Arnold. I I don't know he was ever expected to defend. I, you uh, know what? I I agree with you. I don't think when Sivram says that the primary aim. 
he was never told to defend from the last one and a half years. I don't think Klopp mm. bothered with it when they had two ex- at least one excellent central defender and one a guy who complemented Van Dijk very well, whoever that was. Yeah, was the expectation was never put on Trent Alexander Arnold. So now suddenly he's having, he has to realize that he has to defend it's tough on him. Yeah, he's just twenty one. Yeah, yeah. Corner taken quickly can't last you for a <laughs> lifetime. Nah, it has to get <laughs> done at some point. <laughs> so my advice to Jurgen Klopp, because I know you take advice from United fans all the time. Uh, is to change positions of two players, right? To drop Rather, Thiago, drop Thiago, just drop him. Drop that, him. That, that, I know, but Thiago I has pointed at his <laughs> teammate so well this time. <laughs> that's true, that's true. He I don't, pointed, he winked also. <laughs> he, uh, I think he danced also a little bit in the middle when they were knocking the ball through his legs. And he was shocked when he was taken off. <laughs> yeah, like, such confidence will be built, right? So, I'll see my contract as a 30-40 million. So, I'll sit in all or nothing. <laughs> Football, should ball, all or nothing. This is my advice to the the great Jurgen Klopp: is you're putting two players out of position. You're playing an attacker called Trent Alexander Arnold in defense, and you're playing a defender called Roberto Firmino up front. <laughs> they should be good. He's not a defender first of all. Right He's back. a deep line anyway, it doesn't matter. attacking <laughs> central midfielder. Okay, forward. Forward. Him a forward, <laughs> <Toma guy>. forward. <laughs> He's like a LinkedIn bio. Okay, he can do many things. <laughs> He's a defending ninja. He's a midfield maestro. <laughs> ah, he cold emails expert. He can do a lot of things. Okay, <laughs> so please relax. Okay, so I have an overarching question. Okay, we have been praising Liverpool for a while now. We're clearly they're on the decline. Ooh. I mean, Champions League final one year, next year winners of the Champions League and then for you're following that winners of the Premier League. Great. Hmm. But now it's almost said and done that Manchester City are going to win this Premier League title, which makes yeah. it what? Three out of the last four seasons. Yeah. And out of those four seasons, one was a 100-point season, Chivram. Correct. The other one was the closest battle like for, after a long time versus Ford, Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And yeah. this is another dominant performance which people are now considering probably the best version of Manchester City by Pep Guardiola ever. Yeah. I think Liverpool would be forgotten because now it just seems like there's this insignificant one that came between this absolute era of domination by they Manchester will, City. They will join the highs of Blackburn Rovers, the likes of Leicester City. <laughs> The, they will be the, the forgotten, the one season wonders who have won this after 30 years and will have to wait another 30 years for a new era of modern football to Absolutely. begin. Absolutely. You know, you know what, what would have, what would have kept them at that level would have been if last season went as per plan. Yeah. They technically won it by Jan. I mean, when they lost to Watford, they almost won it. Everyone thought they're going to beat every single record possible, cross 100 points, this, that. But when the restart happened, they lost quite a few games. I mean, they were thrashed yeah. by City in one game, but they had won the title. Fair play yeah. to them. But at the end of the day, if you just look at 10 years later, if you look back, they didn't beat any records in that season. Nothing. Nothing. It was unfortunate to some extent that the season got delayed. But I feel, you know what, I agree. They're going to be just like a one-hit wonder in this era of City dominance. Yeah, they're like a like a Leicester just came out of nowhere, right? Like someone put money on them for five hundred to one, and he won a lottery. Same holds true for Jurgen Klopp. He put uh, money on five hundred to one. He won that season. He won that one season. He won the Champions League. I think that is it. This team is. I mean, they should have been taken for their parts. I'm surprised Salah hasn't moved to Madrid for more money. I'm surprised Thiago is being bought. Uh, at Liverpool, I'm not sure why they're buying Minamino in the middle of the season, then loaning him out. Uh, I don't know what's happening with Nehemi. Especially when he would have been probably been useful now, right? When your front three aren't working. Why yeah. are you complaining about injuries and the lack of substitutes when your defense is going away? Your midfield now, Henderson is also injured as of the last game. Alex Oxlade Chamberlain is the biggest trick Arsenal could have ever pulled. <laughs> That's for Luis Suarez, whoever is listening to this. Um, I mean, retain Minamino. He's just scored. He's looking like he's very good at Southampton. The biggest trick Arsenal pulled was Alexis Sanchez. <laughs> to, to get his wages off, <laughs> Yeah, fair like, was Alexis Sanchez. Yeah, It's like piano tunes to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you're right. Why you're didn't right. my internet drop now? <laughs> yeah, That's like so... Sanchez's standards at United. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say. Just like the number of goals he scored. But no, I think Liverpool is done. Uh, I don't see them coming back at least this season. And I don't know what Jurgen Klopp will need to say for them to come back in, I don't know, the Champions League or whatever 
works for them in the next six months. I don't see them coming back at all. I think City are going to go. And the other thing about City, before we move on to the rest of the games, is that they've now proven themselves to be able to play even uh, in the face of difficulty. Like even when the odds are stacked against them. Last year, they lost Laporte. This year, City lost VVD, right? Oh, sorry, Liverpool lost VVD. Very like for like, they're central defenders. They're the, they're the leaders in the team. They lost KDB this year. They have, uh, they, have, they have not had Aguero since forever. Aguero, exactly, yeah. right? They've still managed with <laughs> with a player like Jesus. <laughs> like I'm not even saying he's not good when he's fit. So I imagine if he's injured. So he they've managed with these people. They've played. They've won those one nils even against Arsenal, right? Not a fantastic game. Arsenal didn't show up to begin with, but even City then thrashed them. At any point in time, it looked like yeah. you know it could go Sapre, either way. You just know what I'm. You know what, Sapre, You know what I'm thinking. That game against Arsenal that Shivram mentioned. It was it was like a training exercise, right? So now City. They have decided, let's not thrash teams. Our challenge is to beat teams 1-0. I think that's the new way of City looking at it. Like it's Or the old hybrid way of... Yeah, 1-0 to the Arsenal. Arsenal. <laughs> I mean, learning from the best. You're right in a way because they could have gone for another 2-3. Not that Arsenal were going to stop them. They did play better Arsenal in the second half. At least, you know, Saka was seeing a little more of the ball than what he was seeing in the first half. But City could have gone for the second and the third. But I think it was only because there is some amount of respect that Guardiola has for Arteta. But the problem with City not scoring so many is with FPL. And uh, the reason why I bring that up is because we have a resident FPL expert. And I say resident because he's a part of the Football Football League, fantasy.premierleague.com. He's also done really well. And the reason why he's on the podcast, and we did discuss this last week, is because I made a promise on Twitter and I keep my promises on Twitter, uh, irrespective of what anyone says about that platform. Uh, we had challenged him to make it to the top 10 by Christmas last year. He didn't, unfortunately. But this year, unlike Liverpool, he's completely turned it around. He's been consistently in the top 5 for so long that even he forgot that we made him that promise. He actually pinged us saying, you remember this tweet? And you you know how Twitter is like, hey, this you. And it turns out it was us. And he's actually joining us today. And I would love to get some tips from him because I'm in the doldrums on FPL. Karthik is uh, in the Arctic on FPL. Sapre, on the other hand, is closer to the United States of whatever FPL is. Um, he's in the chosen land, the promised dream. Uh, he's in the top 20, top 30. That is really, really good. I mean, no one could have seen it, especially Sapre himself. Um, so for that, we would love to hear his thoughts. But before we get into that, we have some games which are still left in this game week. Not all those games are over. And I know a couple of us on this podcast have captained uh, Rafinha. Sapri, do you want to throw some light on uh, captaining a Leeds player who plays in the midfield? Uh, well, firstly, it's a Leeds team, so it doesn't matter where you play because they all just bomb forward every time. It's like a Lagan team, right? Sub, just sub, sub, the, <laughs> uh, just see the ball, they're running towards it. I mean, you take Dallas or Harrison, like my good friend, uh, Kartik Ayer, the visionary Kartik Ayer. Who did he take? Harrison. See, again. I mean, uh, he's been there. He's been around. I can't just... I'm not uh, Tottenham. Yeah, I can't sack things, people for this... Sack things. Money. <laughs> yeah. So, but but I think uh, the choice was right to captain Rafinha. He did had a he, he played a wonderful game against against Wolves. I mean, he very good footballer. Probably, yeah. Very good footballer. All all, Rafinha. all nine players apart from the goalkeeper a chance to probably score <laughs> a goal. Yeah, <laughs> that was the funniest thing. Cooper, right? Liam Cooper in Leeds. Um, so there's this controversy, right, about FPL that people are actually making changes, like players who uh, are who play FPL. They've been making changes. They obviously have access to information. Like they knew Grealish was out much before it became public news that Grealish is out because of the shin injury. They started taking him out. There are a couple of accounts on Twitter who follow them. And they report these changes that, okay, this guy, like Antonio removed himself or something like that. Right? So it's news that goes out. Uh, Liam Cooper actually captained Rafinha. Uh, and Rafinha gave him three assists or could have been assist or would have been assist. He missed all three. So, I mean, it works both ways. So, the PL should take note that FPL is exactly that. It's a matter of chance. Irrespective of you having the knowledge, it's not going to help because you still have to score, right? Yeah, I mean, after all the talk about the number of touches Bamford has had in the box and the chances created, etc. He was shit in that game to begin with. Uh, no, Rafinha, I don't think, gave him a chance to score. And I think Bamford had captained himself for the game week. I uh, mean, believing in himself. Yeah, putting too much pressure, that's called. There's just Leeds and Southampton. Put your hands up if you're hoping for a 5-5. You mean Southampton to get a point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. I get the joke. Well done. Well done, Karthik. 
Cool. So with that, let's wrap up this half of this episode. We should take a quick break. And on the other side, we have a lot more with FPL. And of course, Winam himself. Uh, and we'll be right back. What are some of the radical changes that are now shaping our workspace? With physical distancing and heightened safety protocols being the norm, will technology finally make its large-scale entry to the workspace? Will design as we know it change for the long term? Is it possible for the Indian commercial real estate space to adopt a 360-degree approach to sustainability? Join our hosts at the Future of Space podcast by RMZ as we deliberate with industry leaders, analysts and bright young minds on the way forward for the workspace given the new COVID normal. Tune in to the IVM Podcasts app or wherever you stream your favorite podcasts. And we are back and as Shivram promised you, we have Vinam Suri with us, uh, the FPL expert expert. Uh, just given the, the the sheer amount of knowledge he has, apart from my one question to him as to why did he captain Ings for this game week. But apart from that, he's been just fantastic this season. Vinam, welcome to the show. Hey, Gaurav. Thanks, thanks for having me on the pod. Looking forward to our conversation and the FPL discussion. Lovely. You're the, you're the only guy we've had on this podcast who's actually managed to break into the top five and consistently being there for a while now. Uh, let's start. Let's start with. Let's start with. Why did you captain Ings? Well, firstly, for this, this is it, it's so easy to get on this podcast. Or what? Huh? It is not that no, easy. Sir, Karthik, uh, why don't you do one thing? Why don't you show us uh, by putting your name in the top fifty? Chalo. So, which is my fear. If you start, you all both put some vote down and start saying you need to have minimum top two hundred. That also I won't get in them. Soon I'll be sacked <laughs> from yeah, this fair podcast. Enough. But um, before we get into the mechanics of how you do FPL, tell us something about yourself and where are you from. Uh, how long have you been listening to football? Football. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm from Delhi, born and brought up here. Uh, working here as well. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm I'm also born and raised Delhi, man. Don't don't listen to them. They don't know what they're missing out on. It's fine. Keep going, keep going, Vinam. Yeah. So I have four years of work. It's now worked in a couple of MNCs. Uh, recently joined a startup, so I'm looking after business operations there. That's what I do for a living. Uh, and I think listening to football, football has been there since the very beginning. Yeah, I've been listening to IBM podcasts for quite some time now. All started with Cyrus Says, the man. And then I've been like any and every podcast that IBM had. I used to listen to them and you guys just stuck. Uh, so yeah. That's what our vibes and, uh, also say. Just to... <laughs> <laughs> just and just to just to yeah. just to correct I think it's not it's not easy to get on the pod that is something I can, yeah. I've earned it <laughs> no, fair enough Sivram Sivram did mention that story and, and, and I like you Vimam Vimam there's no there's no twaddling about you you know oh my so god directly, uh, get to the point so. shots fired shots fired yeah. <laughs> so Vimam you work in BizOps how does that help you pick your players man that has to go, that has to have something to do with it you're building f- math models there and uh, figuring out uh, historical data and finding patterns, aren't you? It's just a lot of an- analytical ability. That's that is fantastic. Right, Do you want to explain BizOps to everyone who doesn't possibly interact with someone from BizOps? Like Karthik? <laughs> BizOps. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what it means. I knew it. <laughs> just BizOps. <laughs> 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 yeah, that is exactly it. Oh, Vidav, you need a lot more education on this podcast, man. Not just people who are listening to this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I mean, yeah. BizOps, I really don't know, but I think I can. we can Google it, right? Otherwise, unless it's going to be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 I'll, I'll, no, I'll, I'll not. I'll not. Vinam, you, Vinam, why don't you take a minute and say something? Because these pedestrian people have no idea. Just explain BizOps to you. Yeah, BizOps is nothing but short for business operations. So anything and everything that goes into that. So in my role includes fundraising. It includes finance. It looks after. Uh, I mean, it includes looking after the HR of the company. I'm also figuring a lot of things out, to be honest, because it's a startup. So right now, it includes any and everything non-tech, non-product, if I have to just put nice. it that way. So I think you can also start by figuring out your internet and also helping Sapre figure out internet. Because it's really important that both of you have access to everyone because then we can hear you. Uh, but enough about Vinam and his personal life. What we want and everyone I'm pretty sure is interested in is how the hell did you get into the top five? What is like, do you have like superstition? Do you wear your left sock first? I don't know, man. How do you do it? Ah, uh, no biggie, man. I just look at... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Relax, relax. Like, you can't just start by showing off. 
है ना मतलब स्टार्ट हमबुल से इट वॉज रियली हार्ड आई ट्राइड अ लॉट and i'm happy that i got here start like that do so please it's no biggie yaar i'm just trying to the top 200 like that. <laughs> but <laughs> that makes sense that but, i can agree with no, but to be fair to vinam he is being humble i mean the things that he spoke about funding dekhta hai finance dekhta hai hr dekhta hai wo ceo hai समथिंग <laughs> 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 and this is i'm hoping the trend continues in the seasons to come but yeah so this season i mean i've been i've been a little lucky i've developed somewhat a science around it i finally have an excel sheet uh, in which i track fixtures and say players i like say from the last couple of weeks so there's there's some science to it but obviously it's more of an art and a lot of luck so i really yeah. like he went from no biggie to there's a lot of luck i so humility the hell ladke mein i appreciate I that I didn't know we have Jurgen Klopp on this podcast. Six years I've been doing something, but I'm not doing anything. Then I'm seeing. One, one year I've been doing something. Oh my God! He said Excel sheets. Karthik is already zoning out. We started with this. We've lost Karthik on this. Say something funny for Karthik, man. You follow Karthik and uh, Sapri on Twitter also. What do you like the least about them on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, follow you also. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't like anything least. Now that's why I gave you an easy option with Karthik. That's why uh, he likes nice, least nice. about Twitter, Shivram. That he follows you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Tell us, God of anyway, anyway tweets anything, right? I don't think so. <laughs> like it. God of no, no, no. That uh, a lot of our producers also have the same complaint. Who retweet me? Nah. Doesn't do it. Link retweet me. Doesn't do it. So original thought is too far away. Karthik. Uh, I mean, then there's. I mean. Least thing to like about Gaurav is that he doesn't tweet. So maybe that is one thing we can take. Mm, convenient, but Karthik, convenient. I like Karthik's tweet, right? About Gaurav, I mean, Gaurav doesn't tweet anything. So maybe that's the least thing, least. So that's the best part you're saying we... about him. कुछ सुनना नहीं पड़ता है. Yeah, I mean, different lenses to look at things, right? <laughs> And Karthik, I literally like all of Karthik's tweets, right? जब verified Twitter दिखा नहीं पीछे पड़ गए हाथ धोगे. I like everything. <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's please give me also... retweet. I have, I have a feeling. Sir, association, a... sir. You <laughs> know, you're a cricket fan, right? Uh, I used to be one. I've After he followed you, he's not one. anymore. <laughs> he's been busy with other things. No, no, no. So, as I, either you get in the top four hmm, to yeah. get in the Champions League, or you win the Europa League to get in the Champions League. मतलब अगर top five में नहीं है तो कार्तिक के पीछे पड़के आए फाइनल करने के podcast. Vinam, which team Rolby, do you support? Other than your FPL team, which team do you support? Uh, Sivram, I think you know this already, but no, uh, say it out loud for, for everyone who's listening to this. Yeah, yeah, for the record, it's Arsenal. Fantastic! <laughs> well done, it. Vinam. You're already a winner <laughs> in my books. You're a winner in life. You have made the right choices to get here, even though you've slipped down a little this week. But you're in fourth. I mean, can it be any more poetic? That Vinam, who supports Arsenal, is fourth in the football football league. Take it from me. I've supported Arsenal for the longest time. Fourth is a trophy, Vinam. So this is what you'll get. Uh, for winning this season, <laughs> we will send you a photo of us giving you a high five because you know, you know the ad- but the advantage, Vinam. If you actually end up winning, you know you know the right that the winner of the football should ball fantasy league gets a jersey of their choice. If you end up winning, we can just take one of Shivram's back. And what, is your to Delhi. what is your size? What is your size? I think it will be a large. Oh, perfect! Yeah, it fits. Is, it fits. It fits. It fits. Last <laughs> season, what? Last season, what? What? Arsenal, so Arsenal, every season, right? So that works. <laughs> Finam, walk us through your planning for the biggest game week that could be for this uh, year, man. The double game week twenty six. Um, we have no f- clue. Should we play a chip? What do you think? We want to be where you are, man. Acha, wait. This fixtures for next week. This is not an error. It's actually so many fixtures in one week. Yeah, it is so many fixtures. Why do you start with this? A guilty one. Are because why are they going unnecessarily into two two weeks now? One weekend happened now. February twenty eighth, perfect rectangle. Month ended. Finish it there. Monday perfect first March start. Perfect rectangle. Month ended. Yeah, it is the perfect rectangle. Man, don't get me started, Chivram. And no, then no, have I, another I, my game I, week. I no? wasn't planning to get you started. You started <laughs> on your own about February. The month of the rectangle, but Vinam, tell us. Wow, he's pulling up a sheet. I can see that in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, uh, come on, tell us. I'm just owning my team. Nice. 
<laughs> I'm just opening my 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 teams. So I, I have a chip left, which I'm playing this week. Which chip is this? Triple captain? No, no. This is the free hit. Ooh, nice. I, 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 I still have the free hit chip left. Nice. Yeah. So I'm just trying to be cheeky and uh, get all the good players for this week with each. Like all 11 players have double game weeks. Okay. And have all the Leicester play, Leicester player ends which which I didn't have previously in my team. Uh, no Man City, which I'm scared about. Yeah. But apart from that, all the usual suspects. Vinam, walk us through your team, man. Like, uh, give everyone like you will have to reveal your team. Or, this is the price of being on the podcast. Start with your then, keeper. Uh, so I have Martinez in goal, uh, ex Arsenal player. So have a little bit of special space for him in my well defense. Done. And then Arsenal heart. didn't have a space for him, unfortunately. But keep going. <laughs> Yeah, in my defense, I have Trent Alexander Arnold, Pereira from Leicester, and then a cheeky pick in terms of Coleman for this week. Cheeky uh, pick is TAA, man. If Klopp shouldn't pick him at this point in time. How do you have him in your team? <laughs> oh, no, Klopp said, like, Klopp said, in my defense, I have Trent. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, that, that that well done. Sapri, you redeemed yourself. Now delete yeah. <laughs> all the internet access forever. <laughs> Leave on a high. Vinam, keep going. Yeah, so in, in the midfield, I have Salah, Fernandez, uh, Gundogan, Barnes and so on. Uh, the usual suspects, if you may. And then in the front line, I have uh, DCL and Mr. Wardy. So I hope he has a party next week. Nice. You know Kane? Uh, the Swan versus Kane is something I'm debating. Uh, just a money issue, just like every FPL manager. Yeah. Yeah, I might take a last minute call on that. Very nice. This episode comes out but day after, right? So your team is basically going to be out. So how do you feel about that? Not a problem. I'm not scared. That is how you deal with. Uh, that is how you deal with problems, Karthik. No one. <laughs> she doesn't care if people know his teams. People All I know is yeah. Aston Villa have banned their players from using FPL because they gave away the greatest <laughs> use. That's all I know. <laughs> okay, with your limited knowledge of FPL, we will <laughs> let you be. But uh, yeah, great picks. Sapre, who are you going to pick? Because you're our next contender on this podcast. I mean, I'm going in hierarchy. So Karthik will come to you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sapre, tell us, who's your captain pick at least? Don't reveal your team because not many people want to know, but still. Oh, uh, I'm still in a dilemma between two players. One of them will be my captain. Either it's KDB or it's Richarlison. Okay, cool. So basically, you can drop those uh, players from your team if you heard that from Sapre. Neither of them are going to get any points. Uh, so it's a good safe bet. If Sapre is going to captain them, <laughs> it's a good way to make sure you get some <laughs> points by picking other people. I want to just ask you one more question, Vinam, in your team. Uh, you said uh, you have Coleman in, which is like a cheeky bet over Dinier. Yeah, uh, isn't like Everton have been leaking goals, man. Except when they played Liverpool. Before that, they lost three one. Um, I presume they will get a lot of goals again over the two game weeks. They don't have easy games, do they? Yeah, uh, I mean one of them is Southampton, the other is West Brom. So again, West Brom, I'm hoping for a clean sheet. That is one. Second, hmm. I I have a tendency of going. I mean, whichever player sort of uh, passes the eye test, right? So I saw Coleman last week going. Uh, in the box, uh, like going ahead in the field, right? So that yeah. was another positive for me in terms of picking it up. And the last thing was that there was no money. So Fair I enough. had to go. Okay. Had okay. To go so ahead. confirmation bias, but Karthik, eye test is not something that helps you get glasses. It's basically watch the player do well. And then <laughs> I, I was just thinking nobody will go with Bruno Fernandes then. <laughs> <laughs> Karthik has a problem with Portuguese midfielders who take penalties for teams who wear red. Very specific problem he has, but he does have this problem. Uh, Karthik, let's go with you and close this out. Who's going to be your captain? See, I, I don't know captain and I don't even know if he's in my team. But I think someone on the upward curve is Timo Werner. <laughs> how's, <laughs> that's, how's that's small been is, story throughout the season. Let's go to the Bizop guy and ask him how small <laughs> is this curve that you're referring to? <laughs> like, well, how much data is there? Um, There's I'm, no data, right? Because yeah. he scored, I think, a first goal in 1,000 minutes. It's just something. like an assist. It's not even like a goal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that one, yes. I have a punt. Uh, Viram, tell me what you think. I think yeah. I'm going with Pereira from West Brom in my midfield. Uh, Matthews Pereira. He's gotten a bunch of points uh, over the last yeah. few game weeks. What do you, He's playing Newcastle and Crystal Palace. If United can score against uh, Newcastle, I mean, anyone can, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, with, with that logic, yes. But uh, I think Pereira is a good pick in my eyes. Especially if you have to pick a midfielder. Like I think he's 5.56, somewhere in that range. 5.4, yeah. 5.4, yeah. So, perfect. I mean, in that range. But, again, you 
I mean, I'm very confused with the Man City players this week because I don't know who will play. But again, if you have the money and if you don't have Gundogan in your team, then just go with him. But yeah. yes, apart from that, uh, I mean, another cheeky pick in that range is Pedro Neto, right? Because yeah. Wolves, he's been carrying Wolves, right? For the last yeah, three, yeah, four, yeah. five games. Yeah, but yeah. unfortunately, their I mean, their uh, output is pretty much as City. Like they score the one or two goals at the most. Yeah, the last yeah. they scored a double was against Southampton when Neto scored, you're right. So, yeah. Fair enough. Again, in the cheap space. Um, so, yeah, that is a good shout out. But cool. Uh, this was great, Venom. Thank you for coming. Any final words before you say bye uh, and close out this episode? Episode This is episode 22. And by the way, we've all been talking about fantasy. Um, you can also join the fantasy football uh, league uh, with Football Should Ball. The code is H3OMYA. That's H3OMYA. Type that in the in fantasy.premierleague.com. Put that in the field. You can come join us. Try and beat Venom. You've possibly already beaten Karthik. Yeah, especially if you have more points than Vinam does currently, do join the league. It'll make him feel nice. <laughs> <laughs> there is one way to make sure, uh, you know, Vinam doesn't feel great about uh, not getting his Arsenal jersey. But Vinam, bring us home. Final words for this game week and the rest of the season. Uh, take us out. Yeah. So, I mean, this week is a big one. Probably the biggest in the FPL year. I mean, in terms of the double game weeks we have. So, all I would say is make sure uh, you have the maximum number of players who have two games this week with a good certainty to sort of play this week, unlike Man City players. Yeah. So, get those players in. Have a have a good week and have a good rest of the season. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. That was Vinam Suri, who's currently number four in the league. He's been up, like up and down, but he's been in the top five for a very long time. Uh, and we're glad that we finally got him on the episode. Irrespective of the internet issues, I think, Vinam, um, we had a lot of fun just listening to your team and your insights. Karthik now knows what Bizops is, I think, is the <laughs> biggest takeaway. And Sapre, uh, maybe he can also get his internet fixed. But thank you so much. And Karthik, if you, as a listener, did not hear any internet issues, it's because of the magic of editing. Yes. yes, which will be a second podcast which Karthik will uh, narrate by himself. And if you uh, did hear internet issues, we're going to have a word with our editor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or we could just blame Sapre. But yeah. that's it from us this week. Thank you so much. Uh, you can find us on Twitter. Uh, tweet to us with the hashtag football should ball. All three of us exist on Twitter. Just tweet to us directly. All follow the one verified person on this podcast right now, which is Karthik Ayer. Uh, he retweets from time to time. So good luck with that. Uh, thanks. And again that's, for only for you, that's only for you, Shivram. That's only for you. I love you, man. Yeah, you too. Well, on that note, this has been Football Should Ball, episode 22. Thank you, guys. Bye. So if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media handles. We are at IBM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I'm Fickleberry Hun on Twitter and Instagram. That's Huckleberry Finn, but Fickle. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, I am Sapre on Twitter and G Sapre on Instagram. You can reach out to me at Irant, which is I-Y-E-R-A-N-T, on Twitter and Instagram. This is Football Should Ball Recognize. Hi, I am Sadaf. And I am Arshit. Khani ka itihas, economics, policy, psychology, sab hai menu pe. Only on the Nankali podcast. Every Wednesday, sif IVM podcast app ya website par. Ya fir jahan se bhi aap apne podcast sunte ho. Feeling overwhelmed, anxious, struggling with too many obstacles. Don't know where your life is headed. Well, if you are dealing with one or all of these, tune into the Positively Unlimited podcast. Because in each episode, I share a life lesson, a life hack, a pro tip that can help you get your life back on track. All episodes are available on the IBM website, IBM podcast app, or wherever it is that you get your podcast from.